What's going on guys? Austin Heino Heinen here and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the NBA Finals, the series in general a little bit, but more so about Game 6. A lot to talk about series wise. I mean, who would have thought we'd be here as we were right now just a few days ago. It's all here on today's version of Heino's Highlight. Here we go. This is Heino's Highlight with your host, Austin Heino Heinen. don't know where to start with this series well actually you know what first and foremost let me put it this way what a series we have right now I mean after game four who would have thought the Cavaliers were gonna come back and still force a game seven I can tell you right here and now I, I certainly wouldn't have but these last two games Cleveland hasn't just beaten Golden State they basically come out and smacked them in the face I'm not literally, of course, <laughs> but seriously, there's some there's some stuff going on, and I understand every team has those fans, but you know what? I'm not even going to talk about those fans. People can say it's rigged all they want. People, stats don't lie. Golden State has been outplayed these last two games. If you're a Warriors fan that thinks different, the sooner you get over it, the better. Not trying to frustrate you, just being real. So, obviously, LeBron and Kyrie, a big reason why the Cavs won Game 5 and 6. I mean, LeBron back-to-back 40-plus -back games. In fact, I believe both games he scored 41 exactly and double-doubles. Last night, two assists away from a triple-double. I don't know why people see still keep disrespecting him, but, you know, cliche, haters gonna hate. And then Uncle Drew, that is Kyrie Irving, those of you that don't know your basketball terminology, he also having a fantastic game as well with 23. And also getting four boards. I mean, his assists were kind of down as with his steals. I mean, he usually gets more steals, but two ain't a bad number. And especially when he gets two blocks. I mean, I'm not saying Kyrie is small, but he's still two blocks. That's pretty good for him. But really, the one person I on the Cavaliers that is kind of frustrated me, not going to lie, Kevin Love. Now, why does he frustrate me? Simply because he has been inactive. Now, I don't put it all the blame on him because I give credit to Golden State. They have played him very well, and they know he's a defensive liability, and that's not putting it too harshly or lightly. He is. He's a great offensive weapon, but a defensive liability. But really, other than really game one, Kevin Love has been so ineffective. I can tell you right now, if Kevin Love was producing what he was capable of doing, this series would be done. I mean, last night, that would have been it. Cleveland would have won the series. They would have hoisted the trophy in Cleveland. That would have been it. I'm not going to say Game 5 because Game 1 and 2, Cleveland was just flat out outplayed. Then, yeah, Cleveland smacked Golden State in Game 3. Game 4, I feel like Cleveland more lost. But again, Love didn't really produce much in that game. So, thus my point. But moving on from just the series. I mean, the 90% of the stuff I want to talk about is about last night. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, before I go anywhere, I just want to say right here and now, I am going to try my best not to be heated. I'm, I'm not saying that to try to get extra attention. I'm just... Thing right here, headphone users, beware. Uh, there, it might get a little loud sometime. And cause there was some frustrating stuff last night. And I think some of you already know what I'm going to go into by saying that. But you know what? I'll try. I'll give you that promise. So, first and foremost, Steph Curry. Now, obviously, he played well. I mean, he was flashing threes all over along with Clay Thompson. That's expected. I think you already know where I'm going, but seriously, at the end, people were whining about the officials there. Now, I'm not saying the refs haven't been bad. They have been bad, and not just on Cleveland, bad as well, because they have been bad. Not just on Golden State, not just on Cleveland. They've been bad both ways. 
The only thing that they've been consistent about is that they have been consistently bad. Sorry to those of you that officiate, but that's I'm not the only one that sees that. I can promise you that much. And I'll get to someone who also saw stuff like that, not quite in the perspective that I did, but you'll know in a moment. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, obviously if you're an NBA player alone, kids look up to you. But when you're the un first ever unanimous MVP in NBA history, and you foul out, and your coach is even saying calls were bad. Now, I understand it's a coach's job to stand up and protect players. I mean, I, I respect that, and that's what Kerr's trying to do. I respect that. But throwing a mouthpiece into the crowd. Now, again, he wasn't trying to hit a fan. He said he was trying to throw it in the scores table, which to me really doesn't make it any less stupid. But, okay, he wasn't aiming for a fan, whatever that's worth. Ugh. My thought is this. Folks, you know as well as I do, if LeBron, back when he had a headband, if LeBron ever threw a headband, you know everyone and their dogs would be going wild about that. I mean, everyone would be saying how big of a baby he is, is yada, 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 so on and so forth. Back to my thing of where haters are going to hate. Now, I will give Curry props on this. I mean, he's apologized. I mean, again, doesn't make any less stupid for the fact that he did it. But I respect him for that. He's a, He became a man about it. He apologized for it and owned up to his mistake. And said it himself that his temper got the best of him. I respect that. But, I mean, I'll talk. Then Steve Kerr. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm going to save a section alone for Steve Kerr. I got a lot to say about that man. So, let's move on to another Curry. Only this time, we're going to talk about some Aisha Curry. Okay, so those of you that don't know who Aisha Curry is, first things first, she is Steph Curry's wife. So, obviously, as I said before, the officials have not been the greatest in this series. And again, I feel it's gone both ways, really. I mean, there have been some games where I fought. It's been a little lopsided. Um, a little bit more towards Cleveland, maybe a bit, but that's partially because, um, you know, Golden State's the home team. They're the golden boys. They're the ones that's expected to win it all. So, I mean, it's just a past thing. Those teams get favors. So, in some ways, it's expected. But Cleveland, I mean, I can name a couple times where Irving just flat out got drilled. I mean, with bodies, wrists, the whole nine yards. I'm not going to go too deep into it because uh, I won't stop. <laughs> there's just, there's a big list and we ain't got time to go through it. But her quote is, Word for word, I've lost all respect, sorry. This is absolutely rigged for money or ratings, not sure which. I won't be silent, just saw it live, sorry. <laughs> okay, again, we're back to this rigged for money thing. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Obviously, look, folks, to what I see right now, I just see two teams out there playing basketball, and right now, in games 5 and 6, Cleveland has wanted it more. They've wanted to win more. They've wanted to play basketball more than Golden State has. Now, obviously, Golden State has had good shots that just haven't gone in, and that's sometimes just how it goes. I'm not saying that Golden State's been lazy. I'm not saying that at all. But at the same time, this <laughs> rigged for money thing, I mean, let's just look at game 6 here for a minute. Is that why Aisha um, Golden State shot 40% and Cleveland shot 52? And then, I mean, they even outshot the... Do you want to sit and say that it's rigged? No. These last two games, Cleveland has wanted it more and it showed on the scoreboard. That's why Cleveland has smacked Golden State these last two games. Because they've flat out wanted it more and they've outplayed Golden State. That's just how it is. Now, in Aisha's defense, I will say this. She did apologize and added that in her apology that her father had been racially profiled by police in front of the arena earlier that night and was not let in. So, obviously, that's kind of a bummer, the fact that her father had to deal with that. And I understand why that would frustrate her. Not that that justifies this tweet, which she did delete. Lesson be learned, children. 
watch what you tweet, because even if you delete it, doesn't mean people won't see it. It just takes a few minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, that's it. But, the next thing about officials, and I got some sound bites even for this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to Steve Kerr. <laughs> Believe me, I've been waiting for this. Okay, on to Coach Steve Kerr, who had quite a press conference last night. Now, he's had some interesting ones, first and foremost, this entire series. I remember Game 3 where he's saying, like, well, we weren't ready to play the first time Cleveland smacked Golden State. Reminder, again, which was Game 3. I'm sorry, you're admitting that your players were not ready to play? That's your job! Make them ready to play. Do your job, Steve. But you know what? I'm not going into game three. This is about tonight. Believe me, we got plenty to talk about it for last night. So obviously, as I was saying a couple times earlier, the refs were a big subject last night, and uh, Kerr made that even more known last night. Now, Steph also said something about the refs as well. However, I credit Steph because he was still... Pretty classy with the way he put it. He didn't blatantly point out the officials like Kerr did. But at the same time, again, I respect Curry because he understood what he did was wrong. He made a mistake. He apologized. Let, and bygones be bygones. But Steve Kerr, it's a much different story. Oh, <laughs> yes it is. Steve Kerr especially goes after the officials. And, I mean, he didn't even try to hide it. Now, again, I understand. It's a coach's job to protect his players, but to a point. I mean, there comes a point where you also got to put yourself on a leash a bit. And he did not do that at all. With that being said, here was his comments about Steph Curry fouling out. You know, he steals the ball from Kyrie clean at one point. LeBron flops on the last one. Um... Jason Phillips falls for that, for a flop. And this is the MVP of the league. We're talking about these touch fouls in the NBA Finals. Uh, let me be clear. We did not lose because of the officiating. <laughs> oh, really? Well, then my question to Kerr is, then what is he saying? Because to me, it sure sounds like he's saying the officials had a pretty good deal with Cleveland's victory. I don't know. You be the judge, but to me, it sounds like, yeah, Kerr, yeah, you are. No, I'm not going to go deep on that. I mean, LeBron flops? Seriously? Now, I'm not saying he doesn't. I mean, every player in the NBA flops one well, because they know refs will bite on it. That's just how it is. But seriously, you want to talk about flops, Steve Kerr? You have one of the biggest floppers in the league on your team. His name's Anderson Verizhao. We don't even need to talk about what happened in that game five. Oh, my... Ugh. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, Verjao played the fool game. Long story short, uh, I'm glad he ain't in Cleveland no more. That stuff is unacceptable. But, I mean, MVP or not, a foul is a foul. Now, I'll give him the reach, because, yeah, that one was questionable. But the first couple of fouls, I mean, the first one especially, he threw Tristan Thompson. Now, he says three of them are bad. Really, to me, the only bad one really was the reach. Now, okay, one call there still would have meant Curry would have played in the game, or in the very least, longer in the game. But you're going to go and say that uh, because he's the MVP, he shouldn't get those calls against him? He's still a player. Uh, that, I mean, seriously, I mean... Kobe still fouled out once in a while. LeBron still fouls out once in a while. Dirk still fouls out once in a while. KD fouls out once in a while. Westbrook fouls out once in a while. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah, the refs let them get away with a little bit more because they're the stars, but that doesn't mean they can't foul out and that there's no justification if they do. But that's not even the biggest thing. The biggest thing is that he goes and talks about stuff. You know what? Here's Kerr about Steph Curry throwing his mouthpiece. I'm happy he threw his mouthpiece. He should be upset. You know, it's it's uh, look, it's uh, you know, it's the finals, and um, 
everybody's competing out there and there's fouls on every play. Um, it's a physical game. And uh, I just think that um, I think Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, you know, the way we run our offense, we're running, we're cutting through the lane. We're, we're, you know, we're a rhythm offense. Um, if they're going to let Cleveland grab and hold these guys constantly on their cuts, and then you're going to call these ticky tack fouls on the MVP of the league to foul them out. I, I don't agree with that. Oh yeah. He says that, but Oh no, he's not blaming the officials for their loss. No, not at all. Yeah. Right. So the, you basically pointed out LeBron and Kyrie earlier. Now, again, yes, that steal on Kyrie, yeah, that call was questionable to say the least. I'll give him that. But Le no, no. Saying that the Cavs were grabbing you all game and getting away with it, you guys were doing the same thing. I mean, those of you that watch the game, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, if this wasn't just a podcast where it's just uh, audio, I would happily show it on here but unfortunately with a radio podcast we don't have that luxury but seriously uh you know what i'll i'm gonna try to find some links and i'll put it in if i can find them but seriously you can't just say that no they're all giving cleveland favors because everyone that's watched the series knows that just clearly is not the case and to cap it all off he approves of what Steph Curry did, throwing his mouthpiece. I mean, seriously, there are kids that look up to Curry, not just because he's the MVP, as I said before, but now the fact that the coach approves of that. I mean, to me, this just shows what kind of team Steve Kerr or runs and what he's teaching. I can't talk about this no more. I'm done. Okay, so, rant's over. <laughs> Personally, I mean, look, some of you might see it as ranting, but to me, this is just how it's been, but at the same time, I guess, it's all about perspective. Maybe I'm biased. It, it, it wouldn't be a first time, I suppose. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I promise that future versions will not be quite as critical. Um, I'm not sure how frequently I'll be posting, as it is summer, and I have more, more things going on. But I will post as much as I can. Probably once the NBA Finals are done, I will post another one and about whatever else big news comes up. So that's all I have for right now. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and I will talk to you all later. Talk to you all later. Talk to you all later.